Hi, my name is Mehdi Stop. In this video, we are going to discuss about acute osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is the term used for the infection of the bone. It will result in inflammation and damage to the bone structure and the soft tissues. This is a condition more common in children rather than adults. It is more frequent for kids up to six years old. There are several events that can cause this infection. It can be a dissemination through the blood flow. This is called hematogenous osteomyelitis. In other cases, it is due to an exposure of the bone tissue during surgery, or even worse, during an open bone fracture. Other times, it can be an infection of the soft tissues that surround the skeletal tissue. In this video, we will talk about the hematogenous osteomyelitis. The microorganisms responsible for osteomyelitis are Haemophilus influenzae, that determines a primary infection of the middle ear, or the pharynx. From there, it can spread to the bone. And Staphylococcus aureus, which is specific for the skin infections. This one is not typical for any age group. It can affect both adults and kids. Usually for children, the long bones are affected. More precisely, the metaphysis is generally involved. Why is that? At this level, the capillary system has a turnaround move in its way to nourish the diaphysis. This U-turn is the proper spot for a turbulent blood flow, which will favor the microorganism's deposition. The next step is the pus formation. This will increase the pressure inside the bone and clinically it will be seen as an intense pain. Then the pus can penetrate through the periosteal structure and the infection spreads to the soft tissues. On the other hand, for adults, the pathophysiology is much more simple. It is caused by a surgery complication or an open fracture. The clinical picture has an acute first appearance. The first symptom is pain. It is localized on the affected bone, and it is a severe type of pain. Because of this, the child tends to not move his limb. If the microorganism is disseminated in the blood flow, it can be associated with fever, malaise, and irritability. The nearby soft tissues can be swollen if the infection has passed the bone. The skin can be red and warm on palpation. Based on the clinical features, we can run some blood tests in order to see if there are signs of inflammation. We will see leukocytosis, which means a high number of white blood cells. The ESR, or erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and C-reactive protein are high as well. Next, we will take cultures from both blood and bone marrow. Tip! Osteomyelitis can cause some important complications, such as pathological fractures due to the stress upon the bone tissue and the erosion determined by the abscess. Growth deficiency. The growth plate will close earlier than expected. Chronic osteomyelitis. This is happening because the acute infection does not completely respond to therapy. After the cultures, we will need an empiric antibiotic therapy, such as B lactams and vancomycin, which have a large specter of action. This bone infection is a very stubborn one, so the antibiotic treatment will last longer, around six weeks. To check if the infection responds to therapy, we can evaluate the ESR level. However, if the signs of systemic infection do not come down within 24 hours, surgery will be needed. An open drainage procedure is the gold standard. This will release the bone of the pus pressure and will avoid the bone erosion. With that being said, here we finish this episode. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you can find out more videos like this. A few weeks ago, I uploaded a video about an interesting topic, Bichette's disease. 
It affects your mouth and your genitals. Click on the link in the description if you want to find out more. Thank you for your time. See you in the next one.